Hey everyone, in the news this week, there's a story about a Second World War explosive in Plymouth and a police statement says, quote, Corden set to remain around unexploded World War II bomb. And like many, I'm hoping they mean James Corden and the world can finally be rid of him. There's also a report out about divorce and apparently the average age of a lesbian marriage was 5.1 years. So I guess it just goes to show that even women find it hard to put up with being married to women. But talking about women who are difficult to live with, Shamima Begum was in the news again after she lost her latest appeal to regain her British citizenship, and it's sort of her own fault really, wasting money on lawyers and due process rather than popping into the Calais branch of Halfords and just picking up a dinghy and a foot pump. The BBC of course take a sympathetic view of her case and presumably would rather that she move from Syria to Premier Inn just off the M2, at least until she's a time to audition to be a host on Match of the Day. Honestly, at this point, I don't even know why she's bothering. She should just get a flight over to the States and show up at New York, where Mayor Eric Adams continues to turn satire into reality. In the last week or so, he gave a speech pleading for federal help and begging illegal migrants to stop turning up at the city and turning it into a shantytown, whilst literally the next day agreeing to hand out $53 million of prepaid debit cards to anybody who wanted one, as long as they're not a taxpayer. I mean, there's no background checks, and the whole thing is about as fraudulent as you'd expect it to be. I'm genuinely surprised that defence contractors haven't somehow gotten themselves a piece of the action. Of course, cynics would say that it doesn't matter to the city's left-wing politicians there because as soon as the newcomers somehow also get given the right to vote, then Joe Biden and his friends will gain millions of loyal voters and turn the country into a one-party left-wing kleptocracy. Although they do also seem to have wildly miscalculated how their existing voter base will react and how many people might actually be quite happy to vote for someone else, anyone else, despite the rhetoric. A couple of years ago, almost all of the financial demands made by Black Lives Matter protests were turned down as being unworkable and unaffordable, yet now they're seemingly being proposed and in many cases implemented, but only for some people, literally all along racial lines. There will be no reparations or free houses or universal basic income for the descendants of former African slaves. But apparently if you show up from modern day Africa, you get indefinite right to remain at the Ritz Carlton too. And with free food and money and benefits, in many cases it's greater than what the city pays its own workers. There's a video online I saw this week where thousands of African Americans learned that the rec centre was going to be closed down in order to provide housing for illegal migrants. And a community organiser was shown shouting into a megaphone that they never voted for any of this. Although on the other hand, I can't help but look back to the election four years ago and yeah, you did vote for this, exactly this. It was literally the main campaign pledge that Donald Trump made to stop this happening. Of course, back then it was different, I guess. How were they supposed to realise there might be consequences for their actions? Anyway, see you next week. Fly these clips, subscribe.